for all of you that thought socialism would be a great idea to have in the United States, would be a wonderful thing to try out, we've had socialism for the past year. Now, let me explain what I mean by that. No, the government hasn't officially been socialist. We haven't had any kind of socialist revolution, uh, at least not an overt one. But the eviction moratorium since September 2020 and the enhanced unemployment that pays most people more than double what unemployment would normally pay them has discouraged people from working and has caused many people to no longer pay their rent, at least until the moratorium is over. But the moratorium has illegally been renewed. First of all, I'd like to say that uh, before I continue, I have a new channel called Jody's Spicy Takes. That's where I'm going to start putting all of this political content. This video will be uploaded to both. Um, I will eventually be unlisting all of these political videos from my channel. So go subscribe to Jody's Spicy Takes and enjoy my political content over there. I want to build that channel and keep the political stuff separate from the computer stuff and the technical stuff and camera stuff and so on. <clears throat> that being said, let's continue with this. The eviction moratorium. Well, I need to make a separate video on this, but boiling it down. I feel like the eviction moratorium is actually the use of eminent domain, except unconstitutionally. Let me explain why. Eminent domain is when the government seizes property from a private citizen for its own use, but the government is required to do so at fair market value. Typically, this refers to land, housing, whatever. <clears throat> Typically, we're talking real estate um, when we talk eminent domain. The Constitution says the government has power of eminent domain, but that the government is not allowed to use the power of eminent domain without compensating fairly the person that they are taking, seizing, removing the property rights from. Now, I don't remember the exact wording, but that's the spirit of the law, and the letter of it does indeed firmly say the government must compensate people if it takes their real estate. So, the eviction moratorium is the government taking real estate. It is government ownership of private property. It is taking housing and saying, Yo, you're not actually allowed to have any property rights over that. You're not allowed to collect money in exchange for the use of your property. It is not their property anymore. It is temporarily property seized by the government. So, in my opinion, the United States government, under the Constitution, owes all of the landlords that were affected by the eviction moratorium fair market compensation for all of the damages caused by that government seizure of private property. But what is government seizure of private property? Well, what, what do you call it when you do that to a huge chunk of the housing market, to all the rental market? That's socializing housing that's that it's really communism in the end it's the government is owning that property now granted they don't own it permanently but they still temporarily owned the property instead of the actual rightful property owner whose rights were violated whose property rights were stripped from them illegally unconstitutionally now <clears throat> the other side of this you have the enhanced unemployment in North Carolina, which I just used as an example. The average unemployment is $236 a week. The enhanced unemployment is $300 extra dollars per week. So if unemployment paid them $236 a week, they would be getting more than double that. Now, if we do a little math, that's $536 a week, um, just using easier numbers. Let's see, that's $1072 every two weeks. That's roughly... 2144 a month and you multiply that by 12 you're basically talking about someone getting twenty five twenty six thousand dollars post taxation a year in unemployment benefits basically being paid twenty five twenty six k a year to literally do nothing that is one half of a typical household actually um <clears throat> it might be a little less in north carolina it, um a typical household i think makes like 46 k a year um, the average house, while we're talking 50k of two people are getting this enhanced unemployment at the average unemployment benefit rate. So, <clears throat> you're paying people not to work. 
you're telling landlords that they don't have property rights anymore and can't take money from renters and can't enforce the contract that they have with those renters now they but they still owe the mortgage but you know you're not cutting that off you're not making the bank lose money but you are making the landlord lose money you are private you are taking that property for government use for a year you're also paying people to not work you're doing universal basic income basically it's not a hundred percent but it's ninety percent universal basic income you're paying people to not work so we have been living in a great United States socialist experiment for about a year. What has come of that? Inflation is skyrocketing. Um, a sirloin steak at my local supermarket has gone from $6.99 a pound to $9.99 a pound. Just as one example, if you need to buy a car, oh heaven help you if you need to buy a used car, because good luck with that. Um, there are used car prices that have skyrocketed so high that they're rivaling what you pay for a new car. And those will go up too, but you know, we're in this kind of weird period where the new car costs haven't it hasn't quite caught up. So new car prices haven't jumped yet, but used car prices, oh boy, have they gone up. Um, I've, in fact, I bought a brand new car recently because when I looked at the used options, a seven-year-old uh, version of the same car with 100,000 miles on it was about 66, about, about two-thirds the cost used with no warranty. It's crazy. So <clears throat> inflation's going through the roof because people, you pay people not to work which causes a major depression in the wages or the, the work force available. So now you have a massive scarcity of workers, which means wages go through the roof because employers are desperate to hire. But you have to think about the fact that employers are desperate to hire and they're having to pay more labor to get people. Therefore, they're actually, uh, because the people that they have are demanding more money and so on, the prices of their goods go up. Those prices get passed on to the consumer. Who's the consumer? The, it's you. It's the people who are living under this new socialist regime who are getting paid to not work. Well, you know that 25000 26000 25 k a year that you're getting? Well, guess what? The buying power of it goes down. So if the steak, let's just say everything was proportional to the steak. The steak a year and a half ago was six ninety nine a pound. Maybe not even that long ago. Six ninety nine a pound. Now it's gone up to nine ninety nine a pound. That's a thirty percent increase in the price. So what happens is basically you have um, that twenty five k. That twenty five k loses that much of its buying power. It's almost a third. Um, if the price goes up from seven to ten, you lose a third of the buying power. So that twenty five k is no longer worth what 25k will buy you today that 25k is worth eh, probably closer to i don't know 17 18k and that's the problem is that over time the buying power of the money reduces as the inflation blows up so under this new socialist experiment the united states is going through with an eviction moratorium and enhanced unemployment we have seen inflation skyrocket the money that the government's paying people is starting to lose its buying power so what's going to happen is that now this 25K that you could have lived fairly comfortably on here in North Carolina, especially if you were a couple and you were sharing rent, that 25K is now you know going to fall down to be worth more like 20K, 18K. So it loses a good chunk of its capacity. At some point, all these benefits do end, but we've seen that drop. So now what was once able to give you a comfortable living now is giving you a little bit closer to a subsistence living than a comfortable living. So everything was great in the beginning, but because of the thing, the very thing that benefited you, that money that you have is worth less. If you had savings, that's also worth less. So under our socialist regime, we have witnessed basically a depression. We have a depression looming. That's it. Socialism led to a depression. Now, what you need to ask yourself, if you're still watching this video, if you're still listening to me, run my mouth and say words and not present evidence because you can find all of it you want if you just run a quick search on YouTube. What you need to know, what you need to think about, is do you want more of this? Do you want the downward trend in the buying power of your money to continue? Do you want people to continue to be locked up in their homes? Do you want people to continue to not work such that labor is inflated, therefore all other prices are inflated? Do you want the money that the government is giving you, which is limited, 
it doesn't go up. Do you want that money to continue to go down in value such that you're effectively being given 18k now, where a year ago you were being given 25k? Do you want the, do you want to see that drop to 16, 15? What's the poverty line? 12? It very well could get to that point if the inflation continues. So the the idiots that cheer this on and go, oh yeah, this is great. I, I love that corporations are really finally getting what they deserve. They have to pay a living wage, which by the way, the living wage is going up 50% if the buying power is getting cut. Oh, they have to build them. If you're one of these fools who actually believes this, step back, read a book on basic economics, and do a little math. And understand, what you're advocating for is imploding on itself. If it continues, it will be very bad. No one can predict the future. But what happens is if, if you start seeing actual shortages, and I'm not talking about like the gas shortage. The gas shortage was a mess. Now imagine if there starts to be a food shortage. Imagine if all those preppers turn out to not be crazy, and there's a run on food at the supermarket. Imagine that you can't get the food because no one's producing the food because they're being paid not to produce it, and no workers can be found to produce it. Imagine what's going to happen. Just think about this for a second. The ramifications of these beliefs, of these policies. You're screwing yourselves. You think it's so great, but the problem is, <laughs> you know, to borrow a saying, um, the problem with socialism is that eventually you run out of other people's money. You need people to produce the things you want to consume. Right now, production is severely depleted. People aren't producing, which means there's nothing for you to consume. It's going to be bad. Anyway, again, Jody Spicy Takes, my new channel. If you want to support me, you know, blah, 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 stuff down in the description. You can find all kinds of support links. And comment. I look forward to hearing your comments. As of this video, I've confirmed YouTube is still shadow banning the vast majority of my attempts to comment, even on my own videos. So leave a comment, and if I reply to you, try to read it before YouTube hides it from you. Thanks for watching. Take care.